Hello and welcome to the House of Valentina. I'm Valentina and today I wanted to chat about art mistakes. The great thing about art mistakes is while they are very easy to make, they are also very easy to fix. So I'm going to load you up on tons of ideas today on maybe a different way to think about your art and also some rules that you should definitely be breaking and then maybe a few rules that might be helpful. I think it's gonna really give you a lot to think about and it's gonna hopefully really leave you feeling inspired and energized to go create beautiful art installations, whether it's one humongous piece, whether it's something really small, maybe it's an art wall, or maybe nothing at all. I hope that sounds like a ton of fun. I'm excited to jump in. Make sure you hit subscribe, give the video a thumbs up, and let me know down in the comments what you're struggling with when it comes to your art walls, because I have a feeling there's gonna be a follow-up to this. Yeah, because this is just the start. Okay, let's jump in. <laughs> Okay, so let's get started with one that I think is pretty easy to fix. A lot of times we just go too small on our artwork. We need to really upscale the size of our art. And so I think it's really easy to kind of fall into the trap whether you already have something that you're trying to use, maybe you go somewhere and they only have smaller size art. If you're shopping somewhere like Target, a lot of times the art pieces that they sell there are actually scaled down, they're smaller pieces. So you really have to kind of get creative and start thinking about how big of a piece do you really need and how big can you go? Because usually you can't go too big on a piece of art. I think places like Home Goods are a great place to start because a lot of times they have really big pieces. I bought a piece from them recently because I really liked the frame and I brought it home and I actually painted over the artwork because I liked the fact that it was already framed, it was a canvas, it was easy for me to be able to transform that piece. It was so big it barely fit in my car and that's kind of what I'm looking for. So I think that going too small can tend to make your space just feel a little bit underwhelming. It can also just feel mm, like it's not really full and so definitely think about trying to upsize your pieces. It's really easy to fall into the trap of using one style of art throughout your entire home. But that can really just start to feel, you just start to ignore it, I think. Your, your mind just stops really seeing it. It's a little bit like creating a recipe and literally cooking the exact same recipe every single day. You just kind of get tired of it. We need a little bit of variety in our life and maybe you just need to spice it up a little bit. So. I suggest mixing the style of the actual way in which you display your art. So not just the genre, but the actual framing, the actual way. So you might wanna have one really big piece. And then maybe you might wanna have one that's small and leaning. Maybe you'll have an art wall in one area. Like for instance, in my office, I've got an art wall. I've got one big piece. And then I have one that's really small off to the side. And I think that this is a really fun way to be able to mix things up in your space and make them really interesting. So think about when you're going to maybe do your bedroom. Maybe you'll wanna have one big piece over your bed, maybe a stack of two that are more symmetrical and another on another wall. And then on a different wall, you might just do one little piece. When you add a lot of variety, you'll end up with something that just looks absolutely amazing, it's really interesting, and you don't, your eye doesn't get tired. It doesn't become eye blind <laughs> to your art. I have got to stop for just a minute and thank our video sponsor for today, which is Desenio. And Desenio is one of my favorite places to shop for really affordable art. I absolutely love all the different styles that Desenio has. I love the fact that they basically have every single colorway I could ever want to shop for. It's all different genres. It's everything from black and white and super artistic to abstracts to French style, I, I just love it. So they have sent us very kindly some beautiful artwork. I got online, I, I gotta tell you, the hardest part about Desenio is trying to choose. It's like torture. There's so many great prints. So I've ordered a few and I cannot wait to get these up in my home. As you can see, I've been adding more beige and they have got so many incredible choices. You just literally, it's just the struggle is which one am I going to choose? And if you're like me, it's like, well, why choose when you can have a few? So I have got several here and you guys ask me all the time if I get the frames from them and the answer is yes. 
and they've got this beautiful wood color. So I'm so excited. I have been needing to get my art wall above my desk put together. So I'm gonna work some magic and before the end of the video, I'm gonna show you what it looks like in my office and I cannot wait. Desenio has very kindly sent us a discount code so you can get 40% off your order. There's a couple of exclusions, but I'll have everything listed down below in the description box so you can check it out. You're going to love it. I think another big mistake is also not opting out of art. A lot of times I think that we feel like we have to fill every wall, that we have to put something on every single place that we've got. But white space is actually an incredible tool that you can use throughout your entire home. The idea of white space is that you're simply just leaving something with nothing. And sometimes nothing can speak louder than something. And you have to really think through what it, what's the messaging that you wanna see when you walk into your space. For me, I have thought about my fireplace for years. I really thought I was going to put one big piece of art over that fireplace, but I really like, even though it's not white, I am utilizing white space <laughs> by leaving it with nothing. And I've ended up loving this more than anything else because I just like the simplicity of it. I like the clean lines of the fireplace and you can use that as a tool in many areas of your home. You might have other areas that do have art and then you choose to not put art in others. And that really gives you a breather. And then the art and the things that you put into the space, they have a much bigger voice and visual, a visual voice. That way you really understand, wow, okay, I'm seeing this here and then your eye rests and then your eye sees something. And it's a way in which your eye reads a space and understands what you're looking at and a variety can be very powerful. So I think white space is another thing that you should definitely think about utilizing. When you're doing an art wall or even in the same room, a lot of times we think that we have to use one color frame or a lot of times we think that we don't and we shouldn't use the same color frame when actually we get to decide. So originally I thought I was going to mix match the frames when I did my art wall in my office when in fact I ended up doing all the same. And I've actually had quite a bit of fun playing with some of the art pieces that they sent and creating a couple looks in my office. So I've done a couple different looks just to show you how you can add a lot of variety in your own space. So I thought that it'd be really fun to use that art wall as a little bit of an example for a couple of these because there's a few ideas that went into how I put that together. First of all, as I said, the framing. Think about your framing. In my office, I have black frames and I used one of the wood ones. You are definitely allowed to mix them within the actual art wall and you can also have them all matching. You can also, like I did, include something that has no frame at all. You could also mix the frames within the space the way that I did where I did the one wood that's off to the side and then the others match. It's really, an Really and truly, this is all about exploring your own creativity and what feels right and what feels good. Another thing that I think is super important when you're creating art throughout your home is to think about the color palette. So let's think about the overall house first. When you think about your art, I really like to at least have one color in the artwork reflected in the room. I would just try to have some of that color somehow reflected in the room. You might go for a really, really colorful piece and you just wanna make sure that that color is somehow represented somehow in the space in at least one or two other little ways. It doesn't have to be the sofa is blue and therefore that piece is blue. It could just be as simple as maybe a little accessory or a cushion on the pillow and you're good. You just need it to feel like it, there's somehow the same person maybe is drawn to that color and therefore they're drawn to the same things. And I think that's what you're kind of looking for rather than the paint by numbers look where it's like everything matches. Another mistake I think that is super easy to make is to have all of your art in one genre. I think that that's a really easy mistake because a lot of times we might be drawn to one type of artwork, but I think it can be 
a lot more interesting, to mix your genres, to have something that's abstract, to have something that's drawn, to have something that's a landscape. And I think that you can have a lot of fun playing around with the genres, not only in an art wall, but also throughout your entire home. I think that if you can try to avoid only having one style of art throughout your entire house. Because I think a lot of times we find that we're drawn to one thing, but sometimes it's the contrast between the styles that makes something look even better. I think that it's a mistake to never invest in your artwork. I think that it's really easy when you run to Target or you're at Ikea, maybe you're you know on Amazon and you see a really great print to just grab something that's quick. And I think a lot of times we just, we're trying to get things done. And I think that it can be a bit of a mistake to only ever have that artwork in your home. As I've said before, it's the variety that really makes your art really stand out. We're all on different places on our journey of creating our home and we all have different budgets. I know that it's hard when you're on a budget to even consider being able to invest in art. It's hard when you're just getting started and you're trying to put together a whole house to be able to just take such a massive chunk of your money and put it into your art. But I think that it's also a mistake to never really invest in it either. So what my suggestion is, is look at places like Etsy. Look for artists who are just getting started, but have something amazing about them. Investing in artwork does not mean that it's always going to be the most expensive. It means that you're also investing in the artist as well. I think that there's something to be said about investing in your artwork. There's something about an artist's touch. And when you're just getting started, you might want to start with something that you can't afford. Maybe you start with one small piece from a local artist. And then eventually your goal is to save up and to have one big piece. I also think that you can look at places like Goodwill. To be honest, some of your thrift stores, a lot of times people get rid of really great artwork. And sometimes you can find something that's an original that an artist made and donated. So think about how all the different ways, it doesn't have to mean that it breaks the bank. It just means that you're really focused on exploring art in all its aspects and not limiting yourself by thinking that investment must therefore mean I can't have it. Another big mistake is thinking that your artwork is only meant to hang on the walls. I think this is a big mistake and a big missed opportunity. Art can definitely just simply be leaning. You do not have to only hang it on your walls. You can definitely stack multiple pieces and create a, a more casual feeling with your artwork. It doesn't have to be so formal. Sometimes when it's all hanging on the wall, it can be a little bit formal feeling, but you can have some hanging on the wall and then some leaning. You can have all of it leaning. You could have it sitting on a piece of furniture. You could also have it just sitting on the floor. I think that these are just little ways that you can create just a sort of casual, relaxed feeling with your art. It's just a different way of thinking about your artwork and thinking that it's not just the walls, it's the floors and there's other places that you can display it. I do that all the time in my house. I think that it's a lot of fun to just open your mind to new possibilities of how you can display your artwork and all the different ways that are available to you. I think sometimes those are just missed opportunities and you might find that you don't love it, you'd rather have it hung and then you might find that this is something that you'd never even thought of before and it opens up a whole new world of possibilities for you. Yeah, let me know what you guys think about that one. I'm very interested to hear your feedback. I think that it is also a huge mistake to not DIY your own artwork. And I just think it's, there's so many possibilities that are out there. There's so many different ways that you could create your own art. It's so inexpensive to grab a canvas from your local craft store, or like I said before, grab a canvas from Home Goods and paint over all that sparkly, glittery paint that's there and just whoop, just paint right over it. What I love about creating my own artwork is that the possibilities really are limitless. I can choose whatever colors I want. I can create my own palette. I can create my own theme. I can try to do brush strokes. I can try to paint it all one color. I, over the years, I have found that I've learned so much about myself and what I like and what I don't like. And when you create your own artwork, you can create it in your 
whatever size you want, whether it's a big massive piece or it's something really little, you can create that with black or white or color and you really just get to experiment. I think that it's a huge mistake to never, just at least try. See what you can come up with. Everyone always wants to know how I get so many layers on my canvases and how I get that sort of texture and I'm like, that's 10 deep. <laughs> Things that I tried that I hated. That's what all that is. And I think that there is such a huge lesson in that, that we might try something the first time and it might not work, but instead of just throwing it out and giving up, we can just add another layer. Add another layer, try something new, and keep at it. Because I think that's where the fun really comes from is thinking, that, oh, I wanna try some splatter this time. Maybe I wanna try some brush strokes. I wanna try something I've never tried before. And I think that you can save yourself a lot of money, but you can also have a lot of fun. I think the biggest mistake that you can ever make in your home and with your art is feeling like you have to obey the rules. I think that the rules can actually be really helpful when you're just getting started. When you're not sure of how to hang an artwork, sometimes going to places like Pinterest and looking at, let's say, let's go, say you look at my art wall board. I have a lot of artwork saved there. And sometimes it's easy when you're getting started to go somewhere like that and look at how other people have hung their artwork and how maybe they structure things. Maybe they've got three in a row. Maybe there's a, an art wall and you look at how the structure of it's put together. Those ideas can be really helpful to sort of get your mind moving and to think about how do I actually do this? But I also think that sometimes the rules that we have heard that you have to hang your artwork at a certain eye level, that you have to have all these big pieces in your home, or that you're supposed to have lots of small ones, or they have to be lined up in a certain way. I think that they can at times keep you from actually exploring new ideas and new ways that will actually be incredible. I really believe that you are an artist, that inside every one of us is an artist and then we are creative. And I know that some of you are like, I'm not creative at all, and there's others of you that are like, yes, thank you. We're all kind of in different places. We're all unique and we're all different. And I think that a lot of times if you feel like you're not creative, that it's systemized and you feel like that system is really easy and you'll tend to gravitate towards a system. But if you're on the other end and you're super creative, the systems at times can feel like a prison. So I think that you should sometimes use the rules when they work for you, and then when they don't work for you, break them. Some examples. In my bedroom, it's been the talk of the town that I hung one piece off-centered in my bedroom. I can't believe how many comments we've gotten about that. <laughs> I mean, I always feel bad because so many people have actually gotten really upset. They're like, fix that artwork. And I'm like, no, it, it's not going to get changed. I, I hung it that way on purpose. I liked the fact that it was scaled down. I liked the fact that it was off-centered. It was an artistic moment in which I made a very bold statement to myself. I really wasn't thinking about how other people would perceive it. It was about me. It's my bedroom. This is where I live. It, it's, not a, it's not a studio. It's my home. It's my art. And I liked it being off-centered because it reminds me to break the rules. It reminds me to think differently. It reminds me that sometimes things, sometimes those rules that are made, this idea of having that one big piece was a great idea. I, I've used that in my office just now, just recently. I love that. But I don't, that's not the only way to hang art. I can hang it any way I want. And then I have the little piece off to the side and people are like, what are you doing to me? Like, this is not structured. I don't know how to replicate that. It's not a system. I don't, it is, it is a feeling. And that is actually what I think kind of shakes people up a little bit when they need that system in order to really understand how to hang it. But I think that use those rules if they help you, but also don't feel like you have to be enslaved to them either. Because if you wanna take something off centered, if you wanna hang something really small, because it makes, sometimes it makes a really big statement to use something really small. 
Sometimes it makes a big statement to use something really, really big. And someone would say, well, that's, that's too big. Someone might say, oh, well, that mix doesn't work. Well, if it works for you and it's your home and you are the artist of your home, I think you should do what feels right to you and what feels good. Okay, well, I know I've thrown a lot at you today and I hope that it's just left you feeling really inspired and energized to just think about your own artwork. Think about whether you're in a rut, think about whether you wanna try something new, think about whether you're really happy with what you've already got. Think about, maybe it's time to think about investing in a special artist. There's so many different things that, for me, art, oh, art just makes me so happy. And I really just love art. So I want you to feel that love and not the stress. And I hope this video has helped you just to feel inspired. Uh, if it's left you feeling inspired, give it a big thumbs up. Make sure you hit subscribe and uh, yeah, let me know down in the comments which one of these has gotten you really excited. Tell me if it's stressing you out because then maybe I can do another video that'll answer some of the questions. I have a feeling I've brought up a lot of questions for you. <laughs> I know that I've always tried to challenge myself. I'm always learning and growing. And I feel like sometimes on this channel, that's what we need to do together. We just need to learn and grow together. That's what this channel is really actually all about. It's not that we learned it all, but they're on a journey. And that's where the real adventure is to me in creating home. So cheers, you guys. I hope you have a wonderful day and I will see you in the next one. See you then. Bye.